Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about mini Phalaenopsis. I have such a huge soft spot for these orchids because they're compact, they're pretty, easy to care for, and very, very versatile. You can grow these orchids in your home, in the office. They are what I like to jokingly call house pits, in the sense that they feel best in a home where you feel best temperature-wise. Now, first of all, depending on the company who sells them, these orchids come in many, many different names. Espresso orchids, just at ice orchids, little ladies, depends on the company, but really they are the very same thing. They come from a provider, an orchid nursery, which grows them in the exact same way, pretty much. None of them should have special treatment, depending on this name. No matter what slogans or titles companies give them, they're all the same. And in the hobby, we call them mini Phalaenopsis because they are Phalaenopsis orchids, but they are tiny. And most of them are true miniature Phalaenopsis and will remain small. And guess what? They take the very same care as big Phalaenopsis. So I'll link you down below to a more extensive care tutorial. Today, we are going to arrange a place for them in a shady location in a dark place of my growth space. These orchids don't require a lot of light, which makes them perfect for the house or for the office, but they cannot grow in deep shade or very dark corners. So I'll show you a very easy and quite cheap way to arrange a little corner for them in your home or office and enjoy them for years to come. So with all of that out of the way, let's start with what they will be sitting on. Well, they can be placed on top of pretty much anything. A table, your desk, a piece of furniture, everything that is flat and offers a sturdy support for the orchid. What you don't want to use are flimsy locations. If the surface underneath the orchid is wobbly, the orchid will be wobbly as well. And if there is a chance that people brushing by can actually make the piece of furniture unstable, then the orchid will become unstable and it might fall. So just find a secure location for your orchid. It can be any type of material. Wood wood though, just make sure that you don't splash water around too much. We're gonna get to that though. Other than that, there isn't much to say here. Just place it wherever you want your orchid to sit. Best thing to do is to find a location that benefits from the ambiental room temperature as well. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. In some cases, you might be lucky to have a window with a lot of bright light from outside right next to the place you want to display your Phalaenopsis orchids. However, today we're going to be working with a pretty dark place in my growth space. And as a display table, let's put it like that, I have this IKEA shelf that I just purchased and I really like it. And because it has a flat top, I can definitely create yet another grow space in my grow room for the mini fowls and other orchids which don't need a lot of light. For this, we shall be using artificial light and I'll show you what I bought. Here we have it. This is a desk lamp, which is flexible. I have been growing my big Phalaenopsis orchids under these lamps for the past year and I have to say they have done a superb job. Phalaenopsis really don't need intense light. That's why they're so great for the home. But in order to get the brightness in very dark or shady locations, artificial light can supplement natural light for these orchids perfectly. I like that this type of lamp gives me a lot of flexibility. I can arrange it wherever I want and I can clip it wherever I want. The ones you saw earlier are from Ikea and in the description you will find the name of them. This particular one is coming from a different hardware store. Uh, Ikea is out of stock, but it's basically pretty much the same thing. So let's open it up, install it and talk about the bulb we're gonna use. When we purchase any type of lamp, we need to look at the specifications to know what type of bulb we should get. If we look here, we can see that we need a E27 socket, which will fit into this lamp. 
And if I intend to use an E27 bulb, I need to use a maximum 25 watts bulb. And if I intend to use a CFL, which I will not, and very few people use fluorescent bulbs anymore, I will need to use a maximum 11 watts. All of these things are on the box as well. So let me show you what bulb I chose. The bulb I will be using, it's a new one for me as well, and it's quite exciting. It is a Philips bulb. I have a E27 bulb with a power of 14 watts. So I'm definitely in the standards that the lamp uses. The voltage matches as well, since we're in Europe. And then here we have some specifications regarding color temperature. This is interesting. My bulb actually has two settings. I can set it on warm white or cool white. What I like to use in my collection is daylight. Now for plants, you can definitely use grow bulbs and you can find these bulbs on the market in specialized stores usually. They do tend to have a rather pink light, which is great for plants in general, but not so great for the human eye. Many people, me included, cannot stand that light. It literally makes my eyes hurt. And since this video addresses finding a place in your home or in your office, I'm thinking there might be other people bothered by it as well. So I will not be using a grow bulb, although they're great, because the good thing is Phalaenopsis don't really care all that much and they absolutely do great with a daylight bulb. The problem is daylight can be either warm, either cool. I've been growing orchids in either warm, either cool daylight and they grew very well, so it will end up being my personal choice. I will see which one I like best, so the yellow one or the rather cooler one. We'll see how they look like. Each brand looks a little bit different. Now, when choosing a bulb, obviously you need to be within the parameters of the lamp, but also so try to go for the brightest bulb you can have. Here you can see that my bulb is a 14 watts bulb. This is not necessarily what we're interested in. We are interested in the quantity of lumens. Now, there will be some people more savvy in the comment section saying that this is not the correct way to assess the power of a bulb. I'm not gonna go into the whole power discussion. This video is actually meant for beginners and for the purposes of what we're doing here, the quantity of lumens is a great indicator. So the bulb with the highest quantity of lumens is the one you should be aiming for. And for mini Phalaenopsis, it will be absolutely enough. Now, the good thing with the LED bulbs is that they are not glass. So even if you drop this, everything should be just fine. You're not gonna have glass shards all over the floor, which is oh, something I always dreaded. And also they will not become very, very hot, making them perfect for those homes who do tend to stay a little bit too warm. This will not make the situation worse. And for mini Phalaenopsis, having intermediate to warm temperatures is the best. Definitely, they don't really like the heat. So with this said, let's just install my bulb and see how it looks like. So my bulb actually has two settings actioned by the on and off switch. This is the warm color, this is the warm daylight, and this is the cool daylight. Which one do I like best? Maybe this one, it looks a lot more clean. So definitely you can grow a few mini Phalaenopsis under this bulb, I think three will fit absolutely perfect and they actually do but you know me i want to put a lot of orchids on this shelf make the best out of it that's why i actually bought two lamps so i will go install the second one as well and come back when i'm all done and here we have it it turned out really really great this is a great place not only for mini phalaenopsis but also for paphiopetalums and even african violets all of these orchids don't require tremendous amounts of light but they cannot really grow in the darkness really and with this amount of light they will actually flourish now one of the limitations of this setup is actually the height yes these lamps are adjustable but they do have a limit so they would rather go downwards rather than upwards so for things that grow really really high this is not a good setup but for mini phalaenopsis and other small plants it is actually pretty great now a few more words before we end this video the brand of the materials you're gonna use doesn't matter all that much but obviously it would be better if you can choose a brand that at least has service if something breaks and you are within warranty you can take it back get a refund get a replacement and so on and so forth 
there is actually also a difference in quality. Many, many times I just happened to purchase some no-name bulbs that specified they were a particular color temperature and when I got home and tried them, either they didn't work, either they were a totally different color temperature. So choose wisely. You don't have to get the most expensive stuff, but maybe not the cheapest of all either. When it comes to surfaces, obviously wood is in danger of actually swelling and getting damaged. So watering orchids should be done either at the sink, either be very, very, very careful how you water them. Many mini Phalaenopsis actually come with this decorative container. If you can reuse it, that's great. If you cannot, maybe you can find a different decorative container. I find that for homes and offices and all of these places which use actual furniture, these are really good at protecting the wood or the furniture in general because they make you water either at the sink either through soaking so you don't actually have to pour water and the water goes into a tray and if the tray overflows pretty much the furniture is in danger even with african violets and other types of plants i would actually use decorative containers for this purpose but again this is up to you just keep in mind water tends to spoil furniture more on Phalaenopsis orchids you will find in the description below. We're gonna talk more in future tutorials aimed for beginners, so stay tuned for that. For today, I think it's enough. Look at this real estate. I like to call it real estate. I do have a thing for mini Phalaenopsis and I have quite a lot of them. If you've watched yesterday's video, I showed you that even my mini Phalaenopsis grow into the wall because the light bounces from the wall. So something like this will be absolutely great because the light in this setup comes from the front. So I can make them actually arch towards the front facing me, not the window, which is a great, great bonus. It's just gonna look great. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna go ahead and populate this little shelf that I did here. Many, many of my viewers already asked me about the lamps and the bulbs and all of that. So hopefully this is useful. Again, you can go a lot more professional than this. Mini Phalaenopsis are just not the plants that require all of that grow bulb and intensity and so on. I would not put them under the grow light for the purposes of just having a few really beautiful plants in a home. This setup is meant to be easy to find, pretty affordable to purchase. The actual bulbs were more expensive than the lamps. The lamps are about 10 euros, 15 euros in my area. These prices vary. Obviously, if you're gonna go with something more professional, prices will go up, but that's really up to you. But if you are at the beginning of the journey until you actually become more familiar with everything, start with this. It is a joy, it's really educational as well, and it looks great in a home or an office. So with that said, Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. You know the drill. Like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Also, if you're interested in other things that I use in my growth space, I always list them in the description at the bottom. So check that out. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.